The Wall Street surged to new record highs as former President Donald Trump has reclaimed the presidency, triggering investor optimism and a rally across the major stock indexes. The Dow Jones Industrial Average soared 1,500 points, marking its largest one-day gain since 2022. The global stocks have surged after U.S. President Elections have come to a close with Donald Trump being declared as the 47th president of the USA. This has led to a major rally across markets globally with the Wall Street, especially the Dow, with the Dow Industrial Jones scoring a 1,500 points, marking its largest one-day gain since 2022. In fact, this was the largest gain since 2022. In fact, the S&P 500 and Nasdaq Composite also gained, with the Nasdaq Composite rising 2.78% at close, while the S&P 500 advanced 2.39% to close at 138.27 points. Investors largely are of the view that Trump presidency will bolster the US dollar as the interest rates may need to remain high to combat inflation. Before the opening bell, the futures for the S&P 500 had gained about 2.2%, while futures for the Dow had climbed 3.2% and Nasdaq futures rose 1.6%. We are joined live by Mr. Dave Karlikar, who is a social political activist and entrepreneur, who is joining us live from New York. A very good morning, Mr. Karlikar. Thank you for joining us on Republic TV. Uh, good morning to you guys. It's a pretty late evening for me. So first question really to you is that the global stocks have surged, especially the Wall Street coming up with a record high since 2022. Uh, that's great news for the market uh, and the investor sentiment really. So what are your thoughts on it? Uh, well, you're right. Uh, the market was expecting uh, President Trump uh, to win the election. Uh, whenever any Republican candidate uh, wins the election, it is always good for the market. Uh, predominantly, uh, when it comes to uh, the taxes, uh, they reduce the income tax slabs, uh, they encourage the investments, uh, they encourage the entrepreneurship. Uh, the whole world was watching the U.S. elections very closely because uh, we are the big daddy of the world, being a 28 trillion GDP economy. Uh, most of the companies have uh, vested interest with us and uh, our Nasdaq and Dow Jones listed companies have a global presence. So uh, whatever happens, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> the world basically follows the U.S. step. So the moment the announcement of President Trump's victory, uh, you will see the Indian markets also scaling up after a couple of weeks of uh, downward trends. Uh, as well as obviously the U.S. Dow Jones and Aztecs also are all all time high. Mr. Karlikar, as you rightly pointed out, that the world markets really all look up to the U.S. markets for any clues on the interest rates and as well as how particular sectors are performing. In fact, yesterday, the Indian markets were led by the IT stocks. Now, the IT stocks are also a major presence on the U.S. stock exchanges as well as in India. So how is that likely to pan out, especially for the IT sector, you reckon? Uh, so uh, the IT sector is pretty close to me. Uh, I am in the IT industry uh, for the last uh, 28 years. I own a few IT services uh, companies. I have predominantly invested in uh, most of these uh, uh, IT uh, biggies, whether it's an uh, TCS or Infosys or Wipro or Cognizant, uh, Tech Mahindra, uh, Zensar, uh, LNT, I Mindtree, um, LNT Technology Services, Coforce, you name it. Uh, these are the companies for the last uh, few decades, slowly and steadily as a retail investor. I have been investing uh, them. Many of these companies like Infosys, Wipro, uh, Cognizant, they also have a U.S. listing. So uh, as a person with a dual heritage, uh, by investing in uh, uh, Infosys, Wipro, uh, 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 Cognizant, as well as some of these banking companies like HDFC, ICICI Bank, you are getting an Indian growth in the USA, which is typically 12, 12 to 15% CAGR, compounded annual growth. Uh, 
uh, in the USA, which is which is a great return for people like us. Mr. Kalikur, you are also an entrepreneur. So, how do you think this particular win is likely to look for entrepreneurs? Um, also, since we were talking about the IT stocks and the IT uh, companies' significant presence, help me really understand because the focus is likely to also be on the H1B1 uh, IT workers. So, any thoughts on that? Uh, again, another great question. So, being an IT entrepreneur, uh, I would lifeline revolves around uh, the H-1B work visa, uh, which we have been, uh, I have been filing through my company uh, since 2000. Uh, over the last 25, 26 years, uh, over 8,000 uh, employments I've created through my companies. Uh, we have filed uh, 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 hundreds of H-1Bs and processed their green cards also. So been there, done that, we understand the entire process. Uh, there is a 65,000 quota for the general public across the world, and there's a 20,000 special quota for the people who come into the USA for doing their studies. They will have a U.S. accredited uh, degree, so they will have a special quota. So uh, you will see over and over again, uh, the visa fees has been increasing. Uh, uh, during my time, it was $50 to file an H-1B, uh, and in today's time, it varies anywhere from... Uh, uh, 1700 all the way to about uh, 3500 depending upon whether you're a small business or a big business. Meaning if you have a 50 employees and less, your H-1B visa fees at the USCIS filing fees is uh, $1,710. And if you're more than 50 employees, uh, the fill almost gets doubled. Mr. Carlick, so, so H-1B is the backbone, basically, uh, these are the high technologies. Uh, the USA is built on technology. Uh, these are hard to find skills uh, where the US depends upon uh, the specialized skills and predominantly the skills are coming uh, primarily from India and some from China. Mr. Karlikar, as you also mentioned, the high skill uh, shortages that are rampant and the Indian workers sort of fix that gap. Now, Elon Musk has also been a massive cheerleader for Donald Trump. And uh, Donald Trump has also spoken very fondly of Musk. And uh, he's also been a pioneer with, you know, his initiatives such as the Starlink and the Tesla Ventures. So how would that sort of pan out for the emerging businesses uh, in the U.S., you reckon? Uh, well, I have a different view uh, to this. <laughs> Elon Musk is a very shrewd business person. He is the richest person in the world. Uh, if you were to see his startling program, he's eyeing for uh, primarily the Indian market, uh, which is about 145 crore population. And using internet through the satellite, uh, he is looking to monetize that. And, and this is going to give uh, a biggest competition uh, to Reliance Geo and to uh, the other telecom providers, Bharti, uh, Airtel, and a few other uh, uh, telecom operators, because is providing the state-of-the-art technology. Uh, that's on the uh, Starlink uh, uh, internet providing through satellite. Uh, the other thing is his EV, that's a Tesla model. Again, he is looking a big time uh, for the Indian market uh, uh, and entering into the EV market as his own terms. He tried doing that a couple of times. Uh, the Indian uh, Cabinet Minister Gadkariji had a few back-to-back -back meetings uh, past year, uh, didn't materialize. This time, using the weightage of uh, President Trump, uh, he will be accompanying him uh, 2025 uh, when uh, President Trump comes to the Quad meeting uh, to Bharat. He will be meeting uh, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi as well as uh, the other business meetings he will have uh, where uh, Elon Musk will be attending those meetings and he'll be pushing his agenda towards selling his uh, Tesla electro, uh, electric vehicles in the Indian market. Uh, obviously, he has to work as per the Indian government's uh, rules and regulations. But this means uh, a huge market opportunity for Elon Musk for a simple reason. Uh, in the USA, 94% of the US household, uh, we have uh, a vehicle, we have a car. Uh, when it comes to India, about 7% uh, of the Indian household uh, has a car. So there is a huge potential of the market, uh, which is what he's eyeing for. 
Thank you, Mr. Karlikar, for sharing your insights really uh, on the Indian diaspora's effect, the IT workers, and a lot more post the US elections. Thank you so much.